Over 1 million cinema lovers have already subscribed to Film Companion. What are you waiting for? Hit the bell icon and join our film family. Salim, welcome to Film Companion and congratulations on Petite Mama. It's such a gorgeous, aching, mysterious movie. Um, tell me about the process of picking that as your next project after Portrait of a Lady on Fire because that just you know, exploded globally, went to over 40 festivals. Uh, how did you decide to go from that to this movie about two eight-year-old girls, time travel without time travel, space travel, as you described it? What was that decision like? Well, it's, um, it's an idea that I had while I was writing Portrait of a Lady on Fire and kind of struggling with the writing of Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Uh, because it's a film I gave up multiple times on. Um, and I had this idea for Petite Maman, which was basically just this image of two little girls building a treehouse in the woods, and one of was the mother, and one was the daughter. Um, and I was even tempted to actually go for it, you know. <laughs> uh, but I said, no, I will do this after. And it was already, it was the first time in, ever in my life that I knew which film I wanted to make after Portrait of a Lady on Fire which I think is a way to know that you would land safely, whatever happens with that. Um, and that desire sticked with me. And the minute I, I, I ended this world tour, I just, I just started writing Petite Maman because it felt like for years I had been building it up in my mind, you know, each time. And so the story was there ready to ready to be written, and I didn't expect it to, that I would shut it that fast. That's very different. I thought, oh, this is going to be like this new companion, you know, <laughs> this soothing companion in my life. But the pandemic happened, and suddenly the film, felt, the film felt more, even more contemporary, even more urgent, because it was dealing with loss, it was dealing with intergenerational uh, trauma, it was dealing with uh, ghosts, it was dealing with kids facing um, uh, death, and it was dealing with what we were all dealing with. Um, and so we rushed so that we would be able to put the film in the world as soon as cinema would reopen. You know, Celine, the way you talk about the process of filmmaking is very unusual. Uh, like you gave a talk at BAFTA and you talked about desire, letting desire drive your writing. When you talked about an image of Petite Mama coming into your head, you described it, you said, you know, two girls and making this cabin in the woods. And, and you said that uh, it was theoretical, but sensual. And of course, cinema is all about desire, but I've never heard directors speak about the process of making movies in a way that's sort of sexy like this. Uh, can you speak a little bit to that? Uh, well, you know, I don't know how collective that feeling is. I'm, I, 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 I think for me it's a way, you know, not to tell about my craft because, you know, it's, 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 quite, it's anecdotical in a way. It's mostly a way to fuel young writers with uh, ideas that they are not handed because it's personal ideas that you connect to when you have the opportunity to grow as a writer and as a filmmaker, which is, you know, really a privilege, especially for women. Uh, and so it's, I guess it's a way to, you know, make them, je sais pas comment, I don't know, you said that in English, gagner du temps, to win some time, to, to because you're going to get taught a lot, a lot of uh, theories and, you know, people who want to make film, usually they care a lot about cinema. So let's give them advice about, you know, being uncompromising. You know, they know about that desire. But cinema is, costs so much money. It's so heavy to make. Like, uh, it's, it's fueled with multiple desire. And I think it's, you know, talking about that is, is I don't know, it's, I guess it's a way to give courage. You know, and that's what I'm trying to do. It's it's hacks for being uncompromising, being radical, 
and knowing why. You know, it's not just an idea. It's because it's mm, it's important. I think desire is really, really important if you want to actually do what you love. Uh, and it's also a way to, you know, I, I used to... Now I never write a scene or I never, if I don't feel good on a set about something I'm doing, I'm not, I don't want to do it anymore. And the fact, for instance, that I, you know, I used to portray violence or, and I remember I felt really bad doing it. And I remember I felt like, oh, but this is cinema, you know, this is, this is, you should, this is because it's difficult, because it's, because, you know, you should show this. And now I'm like, no, this is not listening to your guts. This is not listening to what feels good and what feels right. So also it's celebrating desire. It's also celebrating how you feel about what you do and value that. Um, because cinema is really, really like an art of reproduction of leg and of legitimacy. And, you know, I know that because I put my body in that system. So I know that. And um, celebrating desire, I think, is uh, it's political also, you know in a way, and it's sensual and political. And that's the cinema I'm rooting for. So, you know, I'm trying to fuel young artists with these ideas. Yeah. You know, you also said in an interview that um, to know the intimacy of, a, to share the intimacy of a female character, you have to share her loneliness, um, which I found so lovely. Can, can you explain that a little more? And I think the same about kids' character. That's uh, that that quote. The first that quote that that sentence. I first had it in mind when I did Tomboy, um, because everyone was telling me, "Oh, but that kid is sad," and I'm like, "What are you expecting? You, you're sharing somebody's loneliness. Just it's gonna be silent, you know." It, 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 and I, that's the moment I was aware of what ex representation of kids in cinema and what is expected from them, and and it's the same for women. Yeah, for women, it's 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 because they're under social pressure all the time. So if you want to see uh, if you want to share intimacy, then you have to, yeah, to share a loneliness or to share, uh, you know, an exclusive female space. Um, uh, and I just think it's the truth. <laughs> I don't know how to elaborate on that. I think it's obvious. Um, and we know about this already in life, you know. Yeah. Tell me, uh, in the last 18 months, there's been so many conversations about the future of cinema, you know, uh, what, what's going to happen now? Uh, what gives you hope? Well, um, what gives me hope, I guess, is uh, that we have hybrid solution. I think, uh, like for instance, here I'm working with Mubi, so it's, uh, it's a theatrical release and it's also a digital release. And um, I have hope for hybridity because, uh, you know, we shouldn't define cinema as uh, fiction that is in a theater. Because otherwise, you know, it's it, we're not going to defend all cinemas because access to theater, you know, is also political. Um, so if we are relying on the condition of how we are watched, you know, of course we design film for theaters and, and it's the greatest way to see them. But um, what gives me hope is that uh, cinema for me is about, you know, it's a category that could expand now. Because if it's not only about theaters, then what is it about? And I think this... Reflection. I like to think about that. And, you know, these days I'm thinking, no, cinema is about a specific intimacy between a viewer and a film. And it's specific because it's an hour and a half. It's not episodic. You know, if we, if we compare it to TV, it has a so strong intimacy with the viewer. So, yeah, how, what is the specific of this intimacy? Uh, and how, why should we, and I think watching a film at home is some form of intimacy. You know, if you, if you bring a fiction into your home, it's not about being lazy. It's not, maybe it's not comfortable because maybe you're going to watch it. You know, it's a lot of, so I'm just trying to be curious um, about all these possibilities and to keep thinking about what makes it cinema. That's not as simple as the size of the room because otherwise, you know, hey, this is, cinema deserves better than just this definition. Um, so, yeah, expanding that, those categories, you know, that's that's the 21st century, <laughs> that's, that's what we're going through, expanding all categories. So I, what gives me hope is that I really like to think about that, and I'm sure that I'm not alone. Yeah. Well, I, I think I have only 10 minutes, though I had lots of questions, and, and we would love to have you come and 
come to India someday. Uh, we're all big fans. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was really nice talking to you.